No, thank you. It, we're not yet. There it is. Oh, there, there we go. Oh, um, that's interesting. Okay, so we were not recording, so I'm going to repeat that a little bit, guys. Yes. We're here for the water today. Uh, Maya and myself and Veronica, who will probably be here, and um, Tanya. So we have Colorado, California, Pennsylvania, and Uruguay. We're the four who generally are the leads on the storytelling and the storytelling lodge. <clears throat> but there's other people here today from other groups that we're doing things together, and that is awesome. So I thank you all for being here. Special thanks to Anne and Danny. I don't know what time it is there in London, but I know it's late. And from my chief and brother, Chief Charles Two Dog, who is dealing with all kinds of um, COVID problems with the tribe down in Kentucky, but I see he's shown up here anyway. And everyone else who's here, because I know we all have a million things to do. All right, here is Darwin. I know my brother from Africa as Darwin. I won't even try to pronounce his name. We'll let him do that when he speaks. Welcome, Darwin. No, I know. And uh, the background is that one man who played uh, in Barcelona, and we did a very good talk. Okay, everybody, remember turn turn off your mics unless that's it. If you're not speaking, keep your mics off. Good deal. As we head into this, um, Brianna is going to open with one of her poems, and I believe one of her songs, which is perfect. And um, she has to leave then at some point. So I'm very thankful that she made the time to come and be part of this because <clears throat> I feel strongly about what she's doing. And she's one of the ones I'm working with, with some other folks who are on here. Um, we may have time for that later. Uh, from there, then we'll head into the world water law and then we'll start into the stories. We can take as long as we want. I just will leave this thing recording. Brianna, are you there? Yes, I am ready. So the poem that I have, um, I'll read that first. Uh, this was originally written for, um, for racial injustice. It was written um, in inspiration of Martin Luther King Day. Um, but I feel like this poem applies to more than that. I feel like um, the, the subject, you know, the person whose perspective it's from, and then the person or the people that the uh, speaker is talking to, I feel like those can both be um, changed to have this poem apply to a lot of different things. Um, so I will read this for you guys. Your country used to have a dream. You people who came here, came here dreaming. You dreamed that you would not be judged by the occupations of your fathers, by the clothes you wear or the homes you live in by the country or culture from which your ancestors hail from, but that you would be judged based on the content of your own character, that you would be free to write your own stories, be your own judges of character, and be your own masters. You then created a country where unfortunately that dream was fulfilled, unfortunate because the definitions changed. Being free to write your own stories really meant unwriting the stories of others, stealing the plot points you like and leaving the rest. Being your own judges of character really meant being the deciders of what was good character, simply equating that to however you already were. Being your own masters really meant being the masters of what you thought you were entitled to, slaving away at invalidating other human life, you came to this land with a beautiful dream and you ruined it. And we who have been watching, we don't know how to fix it anymore. You came here with a beautiful dream, a dream that was parallel to the, cult to the cultural practices of the people who are already here. You didn't see that and you ruined it. We will fix your mistakes. We will forgive you because it, because it is what we do. But we will not forget your transgressions, your disrespect to this land and the people here. We will not forget how you tore people from their homes in the dead of night and told them that they'd be better off with you. We, told, we will not forget how the better life you promised them actually meant a life of sickness, of dysentery, smallpox, 
alcoholism, and homicide. We will not forget. We will never forget. But unlike you, we know that every human life is valuable, so we will help you. We see that you are not inherently evil, but taught to be, not organically malicious, but taught to be. We will teach you how to love, how to truly not judge a person, how to truly be your own master and nothing more. We will teach you like you should have let us do in the first place. And you will see what life is like when that dream that you brought here really comes true. So this poem in relation to World Water Day, um, there's a lot of language in there that makes it very specific to what I had written it for originally, but I think that um, if some words were changed and whatnot, we could see it as the water talking to us, um, the earth talking to us, telling us that it's been hurt, that it's been disrespected, and that we need to do what we can to to change that and to reverse those transgressions that we have made against our own earth, against our own home. Um, and the song that I learned from my grandmother, Shannon, it kind of is, um, I feel like it's a start to that. Um, it was a song that was created by Doreen Day and her grandson. Um, Doreen Day had gone to a conference and heard the words, water, we love you, we thank you, and we respect you. And her and her grandson over time changed that into a song. Um, it was more the grandson's idea, um, you know, bless us for having youth in our lives, for having the minds that they do. Um, and the grandson was the one who asked if, um, if the song could be, or if it, at first it was just kind of a mantra that they spoke to the water, Doreen Day and her grandson. Um, and then her grandson asked to speak it in the traditional language. And then after that asked to sing it instead of speak it. Um, and so they created a song and that song has traveled far and wide. I know it's different um, from the, the, the version that I learned um, that is slightly different from the original. And I know that there are other versions out there as well as it's traveled across the tribes, across people. Um, Traditionally, this song is sung in four verses for, um, you know, the sacred increment of four, first and foremost, but, you know, in relation to the four directions, the four winds, the four sacred medicines, um, lots of reasons for it to be sung in four. So I will sing it and um, I will sing it the full way through for you guys. And feel free to join in if you know the song, if <laughs> you feel so, so inclined. Ni pi ki sa piego ni mi which way ni mi go ki ja way ni mi go ni pi ki sa piego ki mi which Way me me go, ki ja way me go. Ni pi ki sa ki e go, ki mi guet way me me go, ki ja way me me go. Ni pi ki sa ki e go, ki mi guet way mi mi go, ki jo e mi go. And that is our water song. Those words again mean water, we love you, we thank you, and we respect you. Thank you for letting me share. Thanks, Brianna. That is beautiful. Ooh, um, I see Sue Gray Wolf came in. Yep. I think at some point later in the show, she's going to sing uh, another water song, one that we learned when we were at Standing Rock. So it's nice to have all these connections. And I'm so glad you can make it. 
you'll you'll notice that um, Brianna, who obviously is one of our younger members in the circle uh, and a great contributor to all kinds of uh, issues, which I, I love. That's why some of we older ones are hanging in here. Um, what she mentioned, I was taught to her by her grandmother. I didn't know until two days ago on a different call that <laughs> Shannon Crossbear, who is here to give a story later, is her grandmother. I was completely surprised. So we've got multiple generations here, uh, literally within families. I see we have all four colors here. We have, I don't know how many different generations represented. So this is exactly what we hoped would come about today. And it's done it on its own. So um, anytime you need to leave, Brianna, that's fine. It's great that you were here. <clears throat> if you get done and you want to come back, of course, you're welcome to do that as well. Okay. Some of you came on after the fact. We have our friend Frank in Pine Ridge, who often listens to shows. And when Charles and I did radio shows, and when Sue and I did in the past, they don't have good internet. So they listen on the phone. So they're here. And Brianna, just before you go, the young people in that group said they wanted to say hello to a sister. So they said they send their love and energy to you. And I don't think you guys could see that on a phone, but anyway, she gave the heart sign. Okay, awesome. Why don't we, um, let's put off showing the video for a little bit yet. Let's kind of follow this stream and bring in um, Maya. Maya has the words um, that our sister, uh, LaDonna, the Donna Brave Bull Howard wrote for us, oh, a couple, couple conferences ago. And LaDonna is extremely ill now. She was then, but she insisted on writing these words and giving me a picture and asking me to post it up. And so it is posted as well on the website for the World Water Law and several other places. So I thought to honor LaDonna that we would ask Maya to read what she wrote back then for water, and then maybe um, <clears throat> read some of the World Water Law items below it, because some of you probably don't know what World Water Law is. Okay, so Maya, thank are you there? Yes, thank you, Jim. Um, I'd be honored to do this. And I also um, just acknowledge that I have a, a bowl of sacred water here with a crystal in it to receive, well, received your beautiful song, Brianna, and we'll receive all the stories and the sharings. And then afterwards I will offer it some to Mother Earth and some to Grandmother Ocean that's right outside my door. And so I, yes, I will share what LaDonna Brave Bull Allard shared and in her support for the world water law. She says, the water of life, the first medicine of the world is so precious to every living thing that grows, breathes and lives. The water is the female blood of mother earth that brings life. A woman brings children in this world through water of the womb. She then cleans her children with water, cooks and feeds them with water. She plants and waters her gardens. The trees that grow and provide air need water. Water is life. And as we say, mini winchoni, water of life. We will continue to stand for the water so that we may live. The world water law is a great way for all people to around the water and demand a binding international law protecting one of our Mother Earth's prime resources, prime gifts. Thank you, LaDonna. And I'll just share uh, briefly about the world water law. And first of all, to acknowledge that in its first um, inception by this couple, Shelley Ostrop and Jan Golding, 
who had the sense that water is the one thing that could bring us all together uh, across all of the divides and all of the different cultural and religious and political divisions that we recognizing water as what connects us all that it could be the one cause that would unite us. And so they had this idea for a world water law and it, in the, its inception, they thought of law as nature's law, not even human law, is what is in alignment with nature and nature's laws. But then there's some sense of, well, maybe perhaps we could also bring it into our legal laws, but it's more from that spirit that invites everybody to realign uh, with the laws of nature and the laws of the water. And um, I'll just read this beginning part of it that lets you know what, what it's invoking. Hi, Veronica. <laughs> so it starts with just this one paragraph. We citizens of Earth call for and commit to working together to ensure that a binding international law is put in place for the immediate and universal protection of all water as the first vital step toward global cooperation for effective worldwide social and ecological healing. And the world water law consists of three parts. It asks that the uncompromising protection and restoration of all natural water sources, watersheds, aquifers, rivers, lakes, wetlands, estuaries, and oceans be protected. And it asks for the rewilding of ecosystems necessary for the restoration of the planetary water cycle. And third, it asks to be guaranteeing free access of all humans and animals to natural uncontaminated water. And it's inviting all governments, corporations, communities, and individuals to be fully accountable for the impact on all waters everywhere. So that's the essence of the World Water Law. And here on World Water Day, we're here to also support that. And to me, the support comes through the heart connection. When we remember our heart connection to the water, it will guide us in how to bring this unity about. So thank you, Jim. I'm looking forward to the stories that we'll share and to ignite our hearts in love for the water. Yeah, me too. Thanks. That's great. Um, why don't we just pause for one moment and just send our prayers and energy to LaDonna. She is, um, wow, what a protector extreme. And she's one who really combined the generations, because it was a small group of young people who came to LaDonna um, to ask what could be done about these pipelines that were going to come through. And that was the beginning of Standing Rock. And then LaDonna said, we're going to do it on my land here on the reservation. And so she became the, the mother of Standing Rock, I would say, at that point. So let's just take a, a break and send what we can to LaDonna. Mm, great. Thanks, everybody. I'm sure she felt that. We haven't heard anything for a few days. I haven't heard from her son, but um, I'm sure she'll get those prayers and use them in the best way possible for whatever her journey is forward. I'm going to try to show this video. It's short. It's only, it's less than four minutes. 
And this is the one that Jan and Shelley came up with. And some of us worked with it, worked with them on it. Um, I was running out of time. I'm glad to see that Veronica did such a, an amazing job with her parts. Thanks, Veronica. She's one of the stars. <laughs> so let me see if I can figure out how to do this. I know I have to turn it on, and then I guess I have to do share screen. Jim, we're not getting the sound, I don't think. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why. Where is Tanya when we need her? <laughs> Jim, if you stop sharing and then start again, there's two little boxes on the left. of bottom left there's two boxes you click them and that's your sound on the video you mean we you have to click share screen share sound ah okay okay share screen i got it i see it good thanks sue um, <laughs> wow, this could really change everything. What if? What if? What if? So, what if? What if we can shift our intention? from the noise of politics and media to focus on a natural solution that effectively addresses global corruption, destruction, and disease. Imagine if we could simultaneously heal our bodies, our minds, and the environment. And ensure a thriving world for all living beings. Imagine a new way of organizing ourselves as a species that is rooted in, in nature, truth, truth Compassion, wisdom, and integrity. We'll consider this. Consider water. 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 99.9% .9 of the molecules in our bodies are water. We are water bodies. And like every other living being on Earth, we depend on healthy water to survive and thrive. Water has no boundaries. It is constantly in circulation to us, us, between, between us. us, and throughout the entire planetary ecosystem. The natural law of water is to give life and vitality to all living beings. Without privilege or prejudice. When humanity goes against this law, we catalyze the domino effect of disease and devastation throughout our social and ecological systems. When we unify and collaborate to restore this essential law of nature and prioritize healthy water for all, we put in place an exponential healing process that strengthens our individual and collective immune systems. The proposal for a world water law is a citizen-led initiative that calls for and works towards a binding international agreement to ensure the immediate protection and restoration of the planetary waters and water cycle. It guarantees the free access for all humans and animals 
to natural, uncontaminated water. It holds all governments, corporations, communities and individuals accountable for their impact on all waters everywhere. The law of water is an original law of nature that supersedes all man-made laws. And will dissolve all laws that go against life. Will you please join the Global Alliance for a World Water Law? And, and add, add your, your voice. voice. Add your voice. Add your voice. And add your voice to make the World Water Law a global reality. Yes. Together we rise for water. Together, Together we rise for all of life. Thank you, water. 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 Whoops. Okay. Great little video. It's nice to see how far this has come in what a couple of years, I guess we've been working with Jan and Shelley. Um, if, any of, if any of you have not joined, have not put your name on that, it'd be great if you go to the website and put your name on it and sign up and your organizations as well. And this is about water and we're talking water today on World Water Day and we're talking World Water Law but this is about a lot of other things too, especially including sacred places. And a lot of us have been talking about that lately. And I know um, Danny and Ann are here and they're very involved with some sacred places issues. That's another global piece. And many of the sacred places around the globe are on the water or near the water or incorporate water. So these things are all interconnected and we are losing too many of these sacred places and we need them. We need them as part of this journey forward. Next weekend, actually, there's going to be another conference um, <clears throat> and we'll put things up and you'd be welcome to uh, join us there as well. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, I have not seen, Heather has not been able to get here yet from Victoria Falls. So, all right, let's move ahead and let's start with some stories. How about, um, Mm -hmm. oh. George, how about a story? We need a male voice now. <laughs> you, had to, you had to put me first, right? So, oh, can you hear me? Perfectly. Okay. And I'm not introducing anybody. You can, everybody can introduce themselves as they start. Okay, well, uh, I'm George Bishop, and um, what can I tell you? I'm, I'm uh, originally from Ontario, Canada, and um, I, I spent most of my life as a, an addictions, mental health massage therapist for 25 years, and done workshops and stuff. Uh, dedicated my, myself to service to others to increase their awareness of their connection to the environment. Long time ago in school, I, I put together two things. One was psychology and the other one was uh, a farming background and came up with this idea of eco-psychology and that that uh, we really can't study who we are and understand who we are and anything else without an understanding of how we relate to, to the environment. And um, so I've been, you know, tried to, to do my service in every kind of community from reservations to the correction system. My, my uh, clients were mostly the boys that everybody threw away. But uh, so currently I'm a life coach and intuitive reader and um, kind of using my, my background, I had to pivot sort of my life um, because of the way COVID came about and one thing or another, pretty hard to do face-to-face -face and, and massage work, but that's a, a lesson of water. Uh, water teaches us to change form. Um, to do different things, to become different things. 
teaches us to be patient, uh, can grind down rocks. It, we can move aside whole shorelines. So, you know, I, I basically came from a pretty varied background and I had uh, the, the traditional mixture of stuff in, in, uh, in Quebec. And so I had an English Protestant parent, a French Catholic parent, and I had historical backgrounds, including native roots. And, but I always found myself on the outside of mainstream community. You know, the, my mother had made the effort to travel at a young age to Ontario from Quebec prior to Bill 101 because French was a second class language. And so we got picked on. So she sought out the most English name she could find. In school, it was pretty tough because um, yeah, I, I thought different ways than, than my peers from, from this various backgrounds. And uh, at, by age 11, my father had left. And so I found myself in residential school for the next four years where they tried to beat the, the uh, daylights out of me. And the, the, Eng the Protestants tried to get rid of the Catholic and the Anglicans tried to just beat, beat me. But age 15, I escaped and I got out on the road and uh, struggled to find a way of fitting in. Uh, I lived out in the bush in traditional ways. Um, you know, I, and I got interested in some of the things uh, in, in, uh, to do with the res and stuff, uh, starting with uh, grassy narrows. And, and uh, the water there was, was uh, being polluted from the pulp mill, which was releasing a lot of mercury. And uh, it's still affecting. And this was, I don't want to date myself, but this is going back to the 70s. And um, still today, there's no, there's no water on many of the reserves. You know, there's, we've got pipelines going all across the country for oil, but they can't pipe water in. And I got involved with that and the, the Northern Cree uh, hydro project where they basically flooded out thousands of acres of reservation for, for hydro to, to um, go to New York. Uh, so, but I, I went in, in journey and, you know, sort of a spiritual journey and trying to fit in and trying to find my place in the world. And I found myself going down to the Southwest where I had several uh, occurrences um, kind of showed up that helped me with my guidance. And part of it was I had gone down to Wounded Knee in 73 and brought, brought supplies and we helped write a book, Voices from Wounded Knee at, at Aquasasne. Anyway, in, uh, I didn't fit in there either in, in uh, Six Nations because any, anybody who's off res, but so I, but I eventually crossing back and forth, I ended up finding myself doing ceremony on Bear Butte and was, was uh, welcomed in and I uh, committed to Sundance and later helped getting gardens there. And I, and I led a ceremony for in a sweat lodge here for 25 years. And in that time, I'll get to the point of the story. In that time, you know, um, there was lots of argument about blood quotient. You know, if, if you belonged, uh, this, that, or the other thing, you were you were more more important or not, including um, some pretty violent stuff that happens with uh, the teo the different groups that believed, you know, um, all about blood co quotient. But the, the funny thing came down to uh, being in ceremony. And, and in the ceremony, I don't know how many people are familiar, but you go without water, food, and the touch of relatives for four days. And it's easy to miss the food. You know, after the first day or so, that kind of goes away. But the water is what, what really brings you to your knees. And, and technically, we're not supposed to be able to survive that. And, and it's always kind of, kind of funny because on the fourth day, uh, you kind of leave the red road, this material reality, and you go into a blue road and, and your, your spirit carries you across this gap. And it was very clear to me that, that uh, what was important wasn't any of these other things that we thought, you know, when you come down from the mountain, um, the first thing you want is water, food, and a touch of relatives. And that in, in, the, in doing that, uh, we've had a, a, a great forgetting. We once lived in balance, we had a time where, you know, we, we had lots of connection and then there came a, a great forgetting and we create, created that separation. And each of the four nations, black, red, yellow, and white, 
were given a piece of the truth and sent off. But it's obvious today that the sacred hoop of what is the Americas is broken. And that, that the guidance I got from doing ceremony was uh, we have to bring that back. We have to bring the truth back. We have to bring the medicine wheel back. And, and basically it, it's about protecting the water. When I was a boy, you could go canoeing and drink out of the lake. We, we had a well that was only 75 feet. And by the time I was 18, we had a drilled well at 175 feet. And they said we had to go on city water. Um, without it, we can't, we can't do a thing. So the, the big lesson, and you know, in honor of um, Water Day, you know, it, it's a great teacher. It can be fluid, it can give life, it can take life, it can fall from the sky, it can be a creek, a stream, or an ocean, but it al always teaches us. And, and uh, anytime you feel ill at ease and you sit beside a stream, it just puts you back into that, that place. And so um, that's my story. Thank you, George. That's a great way to start. Reminding us of a lot of things, including the importance of ceremony. <sighs> mm, let's see. Do, 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 do. I'm just looking to see who pokes up at this point. <laughs> I, I um. Oh, I so everybody's a, gonna, everybody's yeah. gonna keep their head down now. That's right. Yeah, people, are, people are avoiding my eyes. Yeah, it's kind of fun. <laughs> oh, I did. Uh, we got a note from the people at Pine Ridge that your story could be their story too, George. And I saw uh, my chief, Charles Two Dog, there nodding his dead head while you spoke as well. So your story could be the story of many. It is the story of many. So thank you for that. <clears throat> Jim, I thought if we go with all the end because it's so late for her, we don't want her to that's fall asleep. Exactly. Yep. That's what I was just <laughs> thinking. Good. Um, I did put a note in there just so we all remember, especially me. Five to 10 minutes is good. So George's story was like perfect timing. So we're not all here until some of you who are up late, like Ann and Danny too, that uh, you'll hang with us. Eliane, how about coming in from India? Can everybody hear? Okay. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Eliane Phoning. Uh, and I'm a lepcha from the lep I'm from the lepcha tribe from the Himalayas, foothills of the Himalayas, from a place called Kalimpong. Well, I'd written a lot of notes, but I think I'm just gonna um, speak. Uh, so basically, my connection to water, when I really think about it, began when I had my awakening in a place called Goa, which was by the sea. And some being opened the door for me and uh, it was a very uh, scary experience in the beginning, but it helped me see so many things and understand and also accept so many things. And this is another very long story. What I would like to say is that um, over time, because of this experience with water and this being from the water that opened the door for me, I began searching for the story of my people, for the story of the shamans of my tribe, which I belong, a lineage that I belong to myself. So through this search, I found out about um, the two rivers, Rongnu and Rongit. For us, it's important for me to say that um, our life and our origin is the Himalayas. That is where we are born, what we, the snow, the pure white snow, we're made of that snow. And from the same snow flow the two rivers, Rongnu and Rongit. In the Himalayas, the peaks are masculine, the lakes are feminine, and the caves are the origins to our tribe, different clans of our tribe. So from the Himalayas, the water flows down in the form of two rivers, Rongnu, which is female, and Rongit, which is male. The Rongnu, the female river, is guided by a snake called Parilbu or Pumolbum, 
and the male, Rongit, is guided by a bird called Tutfo. So what happens is when they come downhill and um, Tutfo is faster than Parilbu, the, the, the snake, the bird is faster than the snake and has like a straighter path. So when you see the path of the river is comparatively straighter to that of, of, of the female one, which is more like curvy in shape because it follows the snake. So when Tutfo reached earlier and guided uh, Rongit earlier, the male, uh, he got angry and he reached there and said, ah, she's not reached yet. And, and then in anger, he turned around. And when he turned around, then there was a great flood that happened at that point of time. So that's one of the short, one part of the story. And, uh, and in that flood, uh, the lectures were saved by a bird and uh, Pohomfo, and he helped them reach safety because he warned them ahead. But in any case, by the time the female came, Rongyi came and met him at the place where they were supposed to meet, um, she asked him, when did you get here? And in lecture, thi sata means, when did you arrive? And then after the point of where they converge, that point onwards, they're both known as the thi sata. So the thing that I would like to share about the rivers is that um, I have been um, sensing, feeling this water dragon, which in our tribe, we don't um, always uh, consider dragons related to water, other than that some deep dark waters, there are dragons that live there. But this dragon keeps, um, I've kind of drawn it and I hope you guys can see it a bit. Yeah. So this dragon um, keeps reminding me to search more about water and how our tribe is connected to it. So what I found out was that this, uh, this place where the two rivers meet is a very powerful point as the masculine and feminine energies come and merge there. So it is a place where a lot of rituals and ceremonies take place. So when I went and I met a senior shaman of the tribe, he told me that you have forgotten, all of us have forgotten that when we are born, we are taken to the river. We are introduced to the river and our name is told to the river. Rivers, but they become the river, so river, Tista. And that the river knows us by name because we go visit the river and pay our respects to the river while the river blesses us with the energies of our origins of our ancestors in the Himalayas because they carry all the memories and all the blessings. So when we're born, we're taken there and we're introduced so the river knows us. Then there is a point in our lives when we get married. Even at that point, at this confluence, we go once again with our shamans and we introduce our partners to them. And then the rivers bless us saying that may your lives be in unison like we are, like the, the female and the male river are. May your lives be blessed in that way. And then again, at another point in our life, we can choose at whichever time we would like to do this. We share about our life with the river. So the river knows what we've been up to, how we've grown, the heartaches we've had. And, you know, there's so many things that we've experienced, we go and share with the river. And the river knows us even more and understands where we are at. Then finally, when we die, it is believed that there are two bridges to go to the other side. And one of the bridges is in the river. And through the bridge in the river which the shaman opens up the soul crosses over and as soon as the soul crosses over um, and they drop the soul to the other side they shut the bridge and then the soul does proceed further to go on to the other bridge which is in the himalayas where again you're kind of which clan do you come from you, you're kind of verified you see and you, you then you're allowed to the other side but then for me, being someone who's been so cut off from the tribe, from the river, from the forests, to understand and know that 
it has been such an integral part of our lives and it is such an integral part of our lives in terms of even food and drinking, but even in terms of our life and how we're so connected to it. And, and for me, I feel that it's important for us to go back and reconnect to the river and to also understand and remember these stories and search for them. Not everybody has the heart and the energy to do that, but for the ones who do, to be able to share these with the younger ones so that they would understand that this river or the rivers are so important to us at, at every point of our lives, including death, they are with us and they hold us. Uh, so I, I guess my story or my learning through the rivers is, is that of reconnecting with them again to make time to go visit them. And uh, I feel that is important because with all that is happening in the world and water bodies, especially even these rivers, Rongnu and Rongit, they have I can, numerous amounts of um, uh, dams built on them. But if you do not connect to the river, then how can you fight for the river? How can you protect the river? And I feel that it's important and it's time for us to reconnect and make time for them. And uh, that is the story I'd like to share um, today. And I thank you very much for having me here. Thank you, Elian. That was beautiful, always. And thank you so, for staying, okay. staying up. It's so beautiful to hear such a deep, personal, ongoing, lifelong relationship with the water in, the, in that deeply personal way. I wonder what this world would be like if we could all return to that kind of relationship. It touched me very much. Thank you. Sorry, Jim. No, it's fine. I'm just, I'm juggling many things, but nothing new there. I, know <clears throat> I think we'll um, shift continents and move over to Africa now. <clears throat> My good friend Darwin is here and I'm going to have him pronounce his African name because he'd just start laughing if I tried. Um, Darwin does some amazing work. We're involved in several things together, I guess. Um, they've planted thousands of trees. Uh, he, he's part of Climate Reality Project. He and I are both part of that, as is um, Tanya, who can't be here today. So, uh, Darwin, take it on. Yeah, hi, everyone. Yeah, just like I'm Darwin Marwele, just like Jimmy has uh, briefly introduced me. Yeah, I'm um, from Dora, Zambia, Africa. Yeah, uh, my story, I've got quite a number of stories regarding water, how I'm connected the relationship that I have with water. Being a religious person, yeah, I've been using water, I think for quite some time in my practice of uh, healing. Yeah, you know, water is such a very powerful commodity that I've been using to cast healing, to help people with healing. Yeah, uh, we just pray for it so that the spirit of the Lord can move through the water. Then once that spirit is come to contact with the water, then we'll go use it as a form of healing. I might not be here. I can just get the water then pray over the water. Then whoever will pick it up, even people here the way we are in this, on this Zoom call, I can use water to heal anybody who is not feeling well. Just by sprinkling the water on the screen, then anyone who touches there, you will receive that healing through just the water that has been sprinkled on the screen. Yeah, and water, everybody, all of us here, we need water to survive, to live. No one can live without water. As humans, even plants, animals, they all depend on water. So it's the reason why we need to conserve our water bodies, our rivers, our lakes, even the oceans. That's my story with water. 
I think this way I can even end now. Thank you, Darwin. Beautiful. Yeah, the healing, the healing power of water. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing that in because that is a critical piece for sure. Hmm. Oh, okay, let's see. I think it's time to see if <clears throat> Shannon's ready to step up. As I mentioned earlier, Shannon's actually the grandmother of Brianna who had to leave. So it's just another connection between generations. Shannon, you ready? Mm -hmm. I want to introduce myself in my language. Uh, my name is Shannon. My English name is Shannon Crosshair. <clears throat> I am um, on the homelands of the Ojibwe people on the shores of Lake Superior, the largest freshwater source on this continent, equal in the world to only one other in, uh, that's in a uh, freshwater lake that was formed during the Ice Age. And <clears throat> just as Others have talked about, you know, it is a part of our ancestral lineage um, to be protectors of the water. The women are the protectors of the water. So I have to just stop and acknowledge um, my beautiful granddaughter and her beautiful words and how much they filled my heart to know that she had been taught, that she listened, and that she is sharing the things that she learned. And um, so that, that uh, is, means that for me, she's on what we call Minobamadzawin. She's on the good path. She's doing what she needs to do. And I wanna stop and acknowledge um, my fellow Sundancers that are here, and I want to thank you for um, sacrificing for the people. And I want to acknowledge um, Winona Leduc, um, Ojibwe Ikwe, who is currently with the water protectors um, in northern Minnesota. I'm in northern northeast Minnesota. She is. Uh, right now located at the headwaters of the Mississippi, which is in uh, Northwest Minnesota. So <clears throat> just to give people a, a location. And uh, I, there isn't like to try to tell a story about water. <laughs> That's pretty huge. Um, but for me, I, I can tell you my relationship to water and that is that um, I am here on the shores of Lake Superior. I go to the water every single day, to the river and to the lake, to the joining of the male and the female as my sister has talked about. And, uh, and I go both, both to the river and to the lake and to the mouth of the river that flows into the lake. And I sing that song that Brianna sung for us every single day. And I receive so much from that practice to build a relationship. And somebody else talked about how do we do that? It's only through relationship. My relatives used to say, you know, if, and we still say, yeah, like, if you want to know us, you know, go to the library, read some books. But if you want to understand us, come and live with us, come and spend time with us. So, you know, if you are just open to the water and people think that's a big thing, but how much would shift if every day you said to the water, I love you, I thank you, I respect you. And whether you're taking a shower, whether you're taking a sip of water, when you increase that consciousness, the water will do that itself, right? And, and I, 
I was thinking when Brianna was talking, I was also thinking about the power of not just the song, but the power of the poem, of how she articulated the fact that we need to remember that relationship. We need to return to that, which we already know, but we haven't quite figured it out in order how to really manifest it right in our lives. And so all of the ways that that can happen are so powerful. And I, you know, that song uh, too, you know, it's important, these stories are important. The story that was told about those two rivers in the Himalayas, that's important. That's an important story. That gives us guidance. For us, we have the stories about Turtle Island, this continent, and when the floods came and how the earth was put on the turtle's back. And we also have the stories about how these continents separated at one point in time, they were one. And um, so all of those stories are, are uh, guides for us to remember, to really be able to have that. The, all of the practices that we are taught that have to do with this first medicine as somebody talked about the first medicine water right first medicine our tears to heal our hearts first medicine to heal our bodies is water right so we we have that it's uh it's it's that thing that just like the word that we use for i guess creator is it really translates more closely to the spirit that moves through all things. And what else moves through all things but water? You know, we're on a water planet. So those are kind of, um, I mean, and yes, of course, I have many stories about serpents and the water and water beings and memeguese, uh, which are the little ones that live in the cliffs. They call them cliff dwellers. They, they kind of in the cliffs on the big lake here. Um, and uh, they're kind of magical beings, I guess. Uh, and they exist in all different cultures. They just happen to be called Mamegwese and ours. And because, and Meme refers to their heads because they have red hair. So like a red-headed woodpecker is a Meme. So Mamegwese is a, those beings that have the, the little ones that have that red hair. So, the, and there's things that happen, but you know, one of the things that I, as I look around this kind of virtual room that I think of is, you know, where are our seven-year-olds? Where are our eight-year-olds? You know, um, it's not like they're not doing any screen time, let me tell you, but <laughs> they need to be in these conversations wherever we're at because they are the future Briannas. They are the ones that are going to be building this relationship. And, and we can reintroduce those young ones to the water, to their water, to other people's waters. And I, I just um, want to share too, there's a, I don't, it's hard with this screen. I, maybe you can't see it, but um, see if I can somehow, can you see it? Okay. <laughs> It's the, it's the uh, We Are Water Protectors book, right? And it's, it's beautiful and it's something we can give to people and um, share with them uh, so that those little ones uh, have that message too. So I thank you all for listening. I'm here. I will be going down to the water in a little bit when we're done with these, this conversation and bringing good thoughts and prayers for all of you. Good health and happiness to each one of you. Chimi Gwetch. Shannon, for you. Here is two, two, two girls for you to say hello to you. <laughs> yep. Veronica can talk to the little ones. <laughs> I think we're getting more little ones involved than ever before, though, Shannon. That's the good part. I remember years ago, some of the others saying to me, there's no little ones around at all. Now at least there's some and some young. Oh, I froze. Do... Sorry, I froze. <laughs> no, that's okay. We have to do better. You're right. Why don't we take a break and have Sue come on? Sue was going to share a song. I'm not sure which one, 
but she may have changed her mind since she's been listening. And I wonder if um, maybe she wants to share a little bit. We live near an area where there's a fair number of eagles here and we go there fairly often. Um, it's kind of wingo. It's all yours. Hello, everyone. What a beautiful, beautiful group. So many from so many different places. It's just, uh, it's amazing. And um, yeah, it's today's been an amazing day with uh, this, the morning's fire circle with Good of the Whole. Um, we started early and it's just, it's just been going strong. But um, there's a place about two miles from where we live here. Um, it's, it's a reservoir and uh, it's a place I love to go and just sit and be. It's a wooded area. There's just quite a bit of uh, activity, especially now. The peepers are just, spring peepers are peeping away and it's just, it brings such joy to my heart and um, to hear them. And uh, there was actually some turtles out and uh, the, the herons are coming back. Um, the birds are singing. It's just springtime. It's, I think springtime is just so beautiful for everyone right now. It's been, it's been an interesting year. Um, and I know everyone's ready for, for new beginnings and connecting with nature and connecting with the water and just being part of this beautiful earth is just uh, so powerful. And my strongest connection um, is with Mother Earth. And um, that's where I receive my messages. That's where I spend a lot of my time. I love being in the woods. I love being around the trees. The trees are special to me. But being, being, being near the water and having all that, the energy of just nature itself is just... Uh, it's just glor glorious, and um, there's a place we can go, um, on the Susque Susquehanna River here in Pennsylvania, or it's not in Pennsylvania. Um, it is in Pennsylvania where we go. Um, it's in a different uh, different state, but uh, it's, mm -hmm. there is a dam there, but it, there's a lot of eagles there, and um, I've had a special uh, relationship with one of the eagles as I walk um, one of our dogs, and it's just been really, really powerful um, for me. And there are also e eagles here at the the uh, reservoir here near us. And um, but the animals, they they connect. You connect with nature; they connect with you. And uh, they're just it's just amazing. Um, so I'm just going to sing one of the songs that I wrote. Um, just for now, and we can do we can do one of the water songs a little later, as you had planned, <laughs> Mr. Gray Wolf. Um, so this is just, uh, I, and I won't I won't use the drum. This is Spirit Lives. Actually, I can use a drum. Spirit lives in everything, guides us daily with our dreams, shows us what we need to see, helps us through eternity. Can you listen to the call, trust and follow tentatively? Find the joy within take feel the earth beneath your feet see the beauty everywhere spirit lives in everything guides us daily with our dreams shows us what we need to see help 
helps us through eternity. Oh, talk we awesome. Oh, ah, great. It's always a nice little break. We had Brianna's at the beginning and now this one and then Sue can do one later. Perfect. Let's move on to, hmm, no, everybody just pause for a moment again. Just make sure you're in your heart. I feel almost everybody is, but I was just starting to think when Sue said the word planning and I'm pushing that away. So everybody just check in with yourself for a moment. Get out of this thing and get down into your heart. This is heart work we're doing. And we are, we are doing a lot of heart work here. Oh, wow. So as we said that, we're welcoming in Heather, who has a heck of a time getting a connection from Zambia as well. She's near Victoria Falls. Okay, great. Um, Veronica, you want to go next? Seems... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is it is it a, uh, possible to share screen? You know, I was working on this with Tanya. For some reason, it won't let me make anybody a co-host and we don't know why but i'm going to look again <sighs> or in, can you enable people to share a screen or something that's what i'll look and see if it'll let me do that i was afraid somebody was going to ask that of course we do. <laughs> you know to go to participants down below and click on that and then see the list yeah my list doesn't include it i can only make host I don't know why. We don't know why. I spent yeah. half hour on this with Tanya last night and we just couldn't get it. Mm. Um, I can make you host. I don't know what it'll do to the recording. It might not hurt it. Let's try that. If it does, we'll just restart it. Okay, your host. Okay, let's see. And we're still recording, good. Ah. <laughs> um, if you missed so it, that's I'm, her children. <laughs> <laughs> the, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, do, can you see? Can you see what I'm sharing? Yes. 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 I'm gonna, I'm, I'm Vero, uh, well, my name is Vero, Veronica, and uh, I live in this land here, this very small little country, uh, this piece of land here, where there's ocean, Atlantic Ocean and the Rio de la Plata or Silver River is, and here is the Uruguayan River, or the Rio Uruguay, River Uruguay. <laughs> and I'm going to tell a story about a place that is actually where I grew up, it's just here, where both get together, the ocean and the, and the river, it's like a point. And the story goes um, <laughs> about this place uh, that is quite close to where I grew up, and um, it's called uh, Cachimba del Rey, which is like some sort of this, I don't know how you call it, cistern, or how do you call this, where you take the water. But uh, in the uh, olden times where the conquerors didn't, uh, weren't here yet, there was like an eye of water there. Um, and the, there was a small tribe of Charrua Indians who were coming to this area uh, in the spring because there was very good fishing and there was very, uh, they could hunt and uh, there was this abundance, abundance of 
sweet water to drink. There were many eyes of water. Um, and uh, they, they thought, you know, they, they were as sweet and pure as the God they, they, they prayed to. There was a Tupa. And uh, in this small tribe, there were two children. Uh, one was called Timbo Wasu, that meant, means uh, a strong tree. And exactly today, before knowing that I was going to tell this story, I, I, I met uh, with a Timbo this tree that makes this kind of ear. It's like the seeds are inside here. It's called timbo. <laughs> uh, and people use this also to, to wash their clothes without chemicals. You can use the gas saponin. <laughs> this is an extra information. <laughs> but uh, this boy, Timbo Wasu, and, the, and there was another girl who was called uh, Gidai. And Timbo Wasu, uh, Timbo Wasu was meant to be the next chief. And uh, he was only 12, but he was super strong. Like uh, his arm was as powerful as his father's and uh, his eyes were um, very deep and he was very serene as well, and very loving. And he had, this is also that place, how it looks right now. <laughs> He had the skin of the shaguarete, this animal. He had the skin of the shaguarete on, on his, uh, to cover himself from the cold uh, on his uh, shoulders. And uh, this is the shaguarete. It's like a jaguar, but it's a bit smaller. And uh, he, worked, he worked the skin himself. He was 12, but he was like uh, hunting together with his father. And uh, yeah. And, when it was winter, when it was cold, uh, he helped his father with, um, yeah, with providing food, and he was uh, also playing a little bit with his friend. But when they went to this place, to this place that I showed you in the map, then he was mostly playing. And this this place was pure sand and and ocean and um, sea and ice of sweet water everywhere. And he and Pidai had a secret place. It was like a secret uh, water eye with the sweet water that they call Ise uh, Maratu. I think it was Ise, Ise Moroti. It's like, it means like uh, uh, white water because for them it was so pure that it was called uh, white water. Do you hear me well with the children playing in the back or is it, uh, is it okay? You hear me well with the children it's, playing in the back? It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Ah, okay. <laughs> they are, it's like it sounds like the the like Timbo Wasu and Vidai, no? <laughs> playing in the back. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so nobody else knew this this water, but they did. And uh, every time they went to look for it, Vidai was the first one in finding it. But because also Timbo pretended to not find it because he loved to hear when his best friend uh, shout to him, Timbo, Timbo, Timbo Wasu, Ise uh, Morati. And then uh, they drank from it every time. But there was uh, this last time they went, uh, she couldn't drink because his, uh, her father wanted um, his family to leave earlier in that area. So then she didn't manage to drink and uh, she was very sad. And her friend too. And then the cold times came and uh, Gidai, who was a very, uh, very soft girl, like this, uh, she was like the feathers of Uru, this bird, but it's also from this area. I'm like kind of introducing you to <laughs> some people here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she got sick. She was sick of sadness because she couldn't drink from the water. And then at some point her, her friend uh, was close to her very, uh, like, very sad, and she said to him, Ise uh, Moroti. So then he understood that he needed to go and pick some water for her from that place. So he, that night he left the camp and he ran into this, uh, this place and he found it. And when he was by, the, by this eye of water, he found this other bird. <laughs> He's called Warapara, Waripara. And uh, he told him, like, go to, to Vidai and give her this water and she will for surely heal. Uh, and uh, and these are the words from Tupa. So the, Tupa sent this bird to tell uh, Timbo Wasu this message. And then he took the water, he uh, gave it to 
Gidai and she healed and the whole tribe uh, went and blessed. This water was like, uh, became like a sacred place. And uh, today we have this saying, everyone who drinks from uh, La Cachimbra, from this water, always come back or stays around it. So this is like just three blocks from where I grew up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and here is like the statue of uh, them. I see if I can make it a bit bigger. Like she's drinking from the, the charruas and yeah. <laughs> and I think that's, <laughs> thank you. I take the share, screen sharing. Sorry, I have to find how to, okay. <laughs> Thank you. And then shift me, make me host again, if you haven't. Looks like you did. Okay. Thank that was, you, Veronica. That was perfect, that was Veronica. So it was perfect with the kids in the background too. That was uh, half, that you. was half your presentation. And, and uh, thank you um, because also someone else was talking about healing of the you know the yeah. healing powers of pure water and clear water. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to mention about children that the, the boy in the end that says like uh, together we rise for water is my son Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perfect. So I'm going to, um, Heather is with us from Victoria Falls. I'm going to wait a little bit. I've messaged the folks, folks at Niagara Falls. They're doing ceremony. So when they get the message, hopefully they're come on and we'll put the two of them together and we'll sit quietly and enjoy. So I'm going to fill in a little bit with a couple of things that are just uh, occurring to me. Uh, first of all, there are some pre-recorded things we have available and they're on the, um, event page. They're on the Storytellers Lodge page. I'll make sure I put them other places. One is a recording that um, Heather and Tanya from Colorado and myself did about a week or 10 days ago. Just we came together and we're talking and it just evolved into a recording. So we had shared a story. So you can hear Heather's story about Victoria Falls. And Tanya talked about her water story from India. And I shared some of my stories from down in Belize. So feel free to watch that. Uh, it was too long to put here. I think it's like an hour, but um, it's well worth it. Even if you skip forward a bit, you can always have the skip button. So do that. There's also another recording. There's gonna be a couple others we'll put up. They came in too late for me to deal with it. But there is another one from our friend, uh, Carol um, Berber, Oh dear, I always keep doing this. Too many names for me right now. Carol Boober Blodgett? Blodgett, yeah. Yeah. She did a recording. Um, she does a water walk each year. And Sue and I have actually connected with her uh, a couple of times, I think, when she was doing it. Um, she did a really nice water story and then was releasing it so we would have it for today. Again, a little too long for this, and she wasn't able to come on. Um, but the links were there for that, too. I think that's like 15, 20 minutes long. That's another really interesting take on water. So if you have time, take a look. We have a couple other friends, like I said, who were sending things. But I literally got them an hour before this, and I just didn't have time to figure it out at that point. So thanks to everybody who was doing those. Okay, I don't see the folks from... Niagara yet, hoping they'll see it. He's been checking it periodically. You know, I, I think I wanna just shift a little bit if I may. I, I mentioned a couple of times, um, our good friends, my brother and sister, Danny and Anne, who are here from England. Um, and I know they're part of some of these other things, but the Sacred Earth Activism Group, there's a conference next week that's posted up too. I've been honored to be asked to talk on Saturday. I don't know what time, because I haven't redone the time thing yet. Um, and there's a lot of excellent speakers there, including our friend, um, Bruce Shillingsworth from Australia, who's been part of our other circle many times. So if you have time, take a look. I think that's, like I said earlier, that's another key part of the water walk even. And I'm just, remembering back, I wasn't going to do a story it up and I'll just kind of do this shortly. 
but to kind of combine the two. There was a time a few years ago, back now, seven years ago, maybe more, I don't know, that Sue and I took the big drum and went to uh, Great Britain and Ann and Danny were two of the people we wanted to meet. We ended up staying with them for some period of time. They couldn't get rid of us. Um, but one of the things we did, I reached out before we went, and maybe that's what this story is about. I reached out to the uh, folks in Great Britain who are in charge of um, sacred places, antiquities, and I asked for permission to go into Stonehenge. And they almost never did that, I was told. Uh, and then I got a letter back from the woman who ran it then, whose name escapes me, it's too long ago. I can't remember names from last week. Um, that she would consider that. And I went, really? Wow. She asked what it was about. I told her um, we wanted to do a drum circle. I wanted to do open the directions. Uh, and I wanted to open my sacred pipe. Uh, and she said, well, we've never allowed fire in the middle of the circle. I said, okay, you know, what, whatever. And we wanted to bring some people in. Well, to make it short, um, we got permission to take in, oh dear, I don't remember how many of us, maybe 15. Yeah, okay. I'm getting thumbs up, so I must be close. Uh, and then we had another 30 or so who were outside the, the circle. So although that is an incredible sacred place and the energy was amazing, um, what I was doing partly was a water ceremony. And so we kind of combined the two. We had some guards, I believe there was three of them, who were going to monitor us, followed us in, very stern, very strict, very proper, very British. And once we got in and started, they all came up and joined the circle. So it was really quite, quite amazing. We got a couple hours in there, if I remember correctly. There actually is a video. I can, I'll share the link to that too. You're welcome to watch it. Um, that was the beginning pretty much of it, that trip around Great Britain that we made to connect our energies with the energies there. <clears throat> and that's part of what has to happen now too. Several of the storytellers have talked about the healing we need. George did a beautiful job on the way we have to heal and get back to some of the old ways, bring them back in again. Combine them with some current ways, but bring in some of what we were doing because it worked better. Um, Charles may mention it later. I've asked him to do the closing prayer tonight. But that was such an amazing, powerful thing. And these sacred places don't have to be far. Sue mentioned Conowingo, uh, a dam on the, um, on the river there. That is a sacred place, I think. For, I've gone there for probably 50 years. Um, how can that be? I'm not even 50 years old. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, so um, the wildlife and the eagles and all the other waterfowl there, are amazing, so is the energy. It was a place sacred to the native people who lived in the area, uh, some of the which, some of whom were Lenape, not United Western Lenape, but Lenape regardless. Um, now I'm gonna see where we're at. Uh -huh. Do we have, oh, here's some chat going on. Let's see. Uh, Just checking things here. I see that our friends from Niagara Falls got the message. So let's see what happens. Oh, in the meantime, who else do we have who was on the speakers list who hasn't spoken? Or Amaya, were you gonna say anything? Yeah, I can share my story uh, if we have time. Oh, wait, sure. no, 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 Amaya. Amaya. Oh, yeah. We didn't, I'm sorry, because I, I thought she was on Oh, no, list. I wasn't saying anything, but oh, okay. I can share something. I mean, if... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, as I wasn't really prepared because I wasn't in the list because I'm still exploring what storytelling is. I'm still in that process of remembering um, myself and my lineage and my connection to water. So I'm still in that um, journey right now. So I'm, I just wanted to sit 
and listen, um, but I was really moved by the stories shared, particularly particularly by George. And it um, kind of made me think of things of my own journey from where I am. So I'm from the Philippines. I grew up there and um, Philippines is like uh, a country of 7,000, about 7,100 islands. So I grew up next to a coast all the time and I went to some beaches there. So we're, we're literally like mostly water and then just little islands. So I grew up like that without really realizing how special that was. And, um, and I kind of connected that with um, the Native American or American Indian um, experience because we were colonized by um, Spain and the United States as well. And I was just reflecting about this before a little bit recently because of things that are, have been going on in my, my circle that, um, you know, the, the United, the America, the, how do you say, like the colon, uh, colonialism from United States, they actually pretty much um, uh, administered the same things that they've done to the American Indians to the Filipinos. Like we were colonized, obviously, after, you know, the Native American lands are, were um, occupied and they used the same methods they did for um, Native Americans or American Indians and even Africans to us. So we were, um, we, we kind of experienced the same thing. And I went to the United States as a product of this colonialism, thinking, uh, having that, um, being taught, like, um, uh, what's her name? Brianna said, being taught of that mindset, coming here for that American dream. And so I have forgotten, but, but now I'm learning that it was like, the wisdom of my ancestors are still within me all, the, all, all this time. And, um, and just relating that to, you know, we were like, uh, like worlds apart from here to the Philippines in Asia uh, with just water connecting all of us. And yet we are so connected with especially our experiences um, historically. And now I have been led to meet um, grandmother Patricia who is, I, I hope I'm saying this right and I'm understanding the words right, um, from Chocto um, Diné and Chocto Navajo tribe. I'm not sure if that's how you say that. Um, I'm still learning. Um, and she's been teaching me so much about indigenous wisdom recently and she has changed my life. I'm starting to remember so many things about myself. I'm starting to like just un undo a lot of the westernized thinking. So she has changed my life. And I think the connection between two person, two people who are water, I think is where more where my sharing is coming from. Realizing that I am water and the water in me is wanting to liberate me and other people who are also water around me. And she, um, Grandmother Patricia is teaching us how to empty and cleanse, I guess, our spirit and our, our thinking and our our, our, um, our waters, water bodies. So she's teaching us to me, that to me and other people. And it's be, been really, really refreshing. It's still a journey. So, um, so yeah, so just um, being in circle with people who are water bodies is what I am bringing to sharing to this space. So um, yeah, so this story sharing, sharing, <laughs> storytelling and being in circle is something still new to me. So but I'm really glad to be here and to be able to share that. So thank you. Good, perfect. That's, we need people to be starting on this road too, like we've said several times. And now's the time just to all stand up together because <clears throat> many of our peoples were persecuted in the past. So yeah, uh, and I, it's part of what I really liked in Brianna's poem. The first time I heard it, um, I think we were at a, well, it doesn't matter. I can't remember what we were at. Um, it just took me that the not forgetting, but forgiving and moving ahead together is such a critical part right now. So thanks, Maya. That was um, excellent. Whew. Um, and 
Danny, do you guys want to say anything about Stonehenge or water or sacred places or? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Stonehenge was a really incredible experience, wasn't it? And these memories just live on in you so vibrantly, it doesn't seem that it, it was that long ago. It was uh, so powerful. And I, just listening to everybody's story, it's just sort of come to me that really I've never associated myself with the element of water, having grown up sort of in, in a city just outside, well, town outside London, not near any water. Um, I never learned to swim or anything. And when we came down to Plymouth in 1978, and we now live kind of five miles from, from the water, and the um, Mayflower steps on the Barbican where um, Columbus, the ship sailed from, and Pilgrim the Pilgrim Fathers and an elder in, in Canada that from Vancouver that, that uh, we're friends with, um, Sandy. Um, we took her there, uh, I think it was three years ago when she came over and she literally couldn't breathe um, because of the abuse that, that has been suffered from, from that happening. And Amaya talking about that just, just brought that back, um, that connection with the water and, and the memories it brought back for her. Um, and I just wanted to acknowledge what happened with that really and, and um, just to apologize really there's so much in these ways that that we are learning and it's such a gift that we could have had so long ago um, so it, it feels really important to to share our stories and try and connect and, and and try and understand how we can help the healing process really and the drum which Danny will speak about that um, we call the spirit of the sound um, she was actually named because of us living so near the Plymouth Sound waters. So it kind of linked the spirit of the waters and the spirit of the sound from the drum's heartbeat that connects us all together. And, and that feels really special. And I try to be conscious a lot more now, and perhaps not every day, um, of just how important water is because as you know Jim in Plymouth we get a great deal of water and we do tend to take it a tad for granted and it's only when the sun shines so, oh look the sun shining and oh it's raining again um, but to really deeply appreciate the water and give thanks and we do go out not at the moment because of lockdown and, and maybe sing to the water and give our thanks and I maybe sing a song when I'm in the bath or say thank you to the glass of water before I go to sleep and that kind of thing. And, and just to remember to keep giving thanks to the water. Um, and I'll, I'll let Danny speak about the, about the drum because I know we've got a big connection with you, Jim and Sue, with the, with the drum. And it would be lovely if we get to play together again someday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's not yeah. if, it's when. Sorry, Danny. Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing us to be here with you in this special time. Uh, water is so important. We're lucky to be surrounded by uh, two rivers that run into the, run into the ocean, basically. Um, one on either side of us, one to the east, one to the west. And the ocean lies to the south. Um, <coughs> the part of the ocean around Plymouth, it's called Plymouth Sound. Um, that's where we got the name for our 32-inch medicine drum um, that came to me in a dream that it had to be built. Uh, and it was very precise that 
it had to be from a buffalo of this land. Uh, we don't have an awful lot of buffalo in, in Great Britain. Um, eventually, after a couple of years, we did find one. We'll find a farm, in fact. Uh, I managed to get hide. Uh, hence, the, the drum was eventually birthed. It took something like 18 months, but it was a labor of love. And her mission statement in the dream was to bring together the people in love and honor of the planet that we live on and bring about peace, love and harmony. And the time with Jim, I also remember we came together with some African drummers with our two medicine drums. And we had a wonderful celebration of bringing the two types of drumming together. Um, and it still brings such joy to the heart as I remember it. I have spoken. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, just, just to add to that, yeah. there's there's a valley and there's a, a steep slope just at the back of our garden, which is sort of about 12 feet away, a good, well, long Put drop. There. But there's, there's this tiny little stream that runs along the bottom. So I know that, that whenever we participate in any sort of ceremonies and we sing or play the drum here, that, that the sound actually carries down through into that water. So although we're sort of in lockdown, we can't get out and about much at the moment, the vibration of love is still going out there, which is which is nice to know. So thank you for allowing us to share. I've spoken. Thank you both. Beautiful. And thanks for speaking English. Oh, I'm sorry, it was British. Never mind. It, it is so good to just talk with you two again. And Shannon put in there, and she's right. There's the hand drums, there's the big drums, and then there's also water drums, which are uh, medicine drums. There's a lot of different drums. Every uh, culture on the planet has drums. It was the first instrument, even if it was just a log that people beat on. So the, the power and energy in that is, is truly amazing. Um, well, I think we will bring on Heather. I see they got our note at Niagara Falls, but I haven't heard back. They might be in the middle of a ceremony. Heather, why don't you come on and share? Because I know your connection is always not permanent. Yeah. There you are. OK, here I am. <laughs> I'm I'm keeping my video off because it takes up ban it takes up precious bandwidth. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, first, can I just thank everyone? I, I, I want to just profoundly say thank you. I, oh, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. Jim, you can hear me, Jim. Okay. I can. I had to find my mute button. Oh, <laughs> I can. I'm trying to get Charles back. He got dropped. Okay. You got it, Heather. Yeah, you know what's so funny is when Anne and Danny were talking and um, Amaya was speaking and I got on the call a bit, a little late, but it's amazing how it, it, you can, you can, you can feel these connections. You can almost feel like you're there. It's hard to explain, but I definitely feel like I'm not even where I am right now. It's strange. Um, so maybe we're all just connected in this space of water, you see, because there's just water flowing through all of us and there's water flowing through all of the earth. And with it, we're all just 
divine molecules. Um, so Jim, I'm sorry to disappoint you. So where we're sleeping, it's almost, I guess it's almost midnight. It's like a sweet <laughs> hotel room. Um, cause I can't, I couldn't go to the falls at night. Um, cause of the, you know, the time zone and everything. Um, I have, <laughs> I have the falls in this bottle. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we've got the bottle. Um, tell me, do you want me to share about Victoria Falls or do you want me to share about working in the villages to give, to, to put water wells in villages for people in Africa? I think you should probably share about whatever your heart tells you to share about. Um, that was no help. Okay. <laughs> no, that was everything. Okay. Now I have a direction. Um, so, uh, Victoria Falls, I, I talked about with you, um, in the, in the interview or the, you know, about the, the sacred spaces. Um, what I feel when I'm here, is that the energy from this, it's, just, it's, 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 it's such a powerful vortex of water coming down off of the, the Zambezi River. It plunges down over the cliff. And as it plunges down, it sprays such a vast amount of water that that all the surrounding area is just this lush green rainforest and you can see you can see for kilometers 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 away um which is why the local people call it the smoke that thunders mosio tunia the smoke that thunders um because of the sound and just because of the becoming off of it. And um, we don't live here. We live like say six to eight hours from here in a really remote village where we're trying to help the whole chiefdom with putting water wells in these um, areas where they're drinking really insanely dirty water. And what I feel when I come here to this, this town is called Livingston. It's like uh, 15 kilometers from the falls, um, is that it recharges so that I can, I can extract, I can extract so much of that pure energy and take it with me back to the village and work with this um, impossible, impossible task of trying to put water water wells in as many places as as we can, and there's limited resources. The more I learn, the more I realize that working with water wells, you also need to be working with permaculture because you have to source the water that you're taking from the earth you have to source the rainwater to bring it back down into the earth again. You see what I'm saying? It's like a, a cycle of giving and receiving, or excuse me, of, of taking and receiving. Um, so the deeper that I go into this work that I'm doing in, in these villages and these remote areas, um, people drink people drink water from a mud hole. And um, somehow that's never settled right with me. So I, I've been here 17 years. Um, my daughter's 11. She's grown up here. I, I dragged her into all this. <laughs> um, but the deeper that I go into it, the more I learn that there's this relationship, this divine relationship between 
putting water wells, people taking fresh water to drink, to bath, to cook, to bath their children, and replenishing the earth with what we've taken, with what's falling from the sky and tree roots and utilizing these long tap roots to resource the water back into the earth. And just this beautiful process um, that's going to be lacking if we just do water wells by themselves. So um, yeah, um, water. It's funny too, um, what happens when you don't immerse yourself in water often. Um, in Africa, <laughs> People say, if you don't bath, you become like an animal. You get cranky, you get irritable. I don't know what it is, but it's so true. It's so true. I've noticed this because it's really hard sometimes to take a bath in the village. There's no running water. If a lot of people have used the same well in the same day, maybe there's not enough water. I could tell you long stories about my daughter who's almost as big as I am and I sharing, let me see here, trying to bath, I, I don't have a good example. Um, this is a trash can. This is a trash can, but maybe something this size of water for her and I to take a bath for our whole bodies and to share that. And what it, what it does to you when there's not enough water or if you haven't been able to immerse your body in water. And, and I'm not talking about like you're embarrassed to go out in public because you smell bad or something like that. Because in the village, we all, you know, if, we're, if one of us isn't bathing, none of us are bathing. So then we all smell bad together. So that's not what I'm talking about but that the, hu <laughs> the human soul, the soul, the soul that resides in the human body needs water. It needs to drink water. It needs to eat water. It needs to be water. Um, and we need to cleanse and purify and um, There's such a psychological and emotional component with not taking a bath. And when we're at Victoria Falls, I just strip down to whatever amount of clothing is appropriate. A thin sundress is good. And just walk through the, <laughs> the way that Victoria Falls is on Zambia side, because Victoria Falls is shared between Zambia and Zimbabwe. I've never been to Zimbabwe side, but in Zambia side, it would like every restriction that in America, there's like signs everywhere and gates and wires and all this. In Zambia, there's just this sweet little wooden fence that anybody who wanted to could jump over, jump under, slide through. There's, it, there's not really any kind of safety limitations like there would be in the States. And so my daughter and I walk very carefully because it's really slippery with all the water that's pouring like the, through the, the falls is coming down and then you walk through the park, like looking at the waterfall, but all of the water spraying off of it gets you soaking wet. And the, the, the it's like little stone path is all mossy and slippery. And we just walk really slowly and just kind of get drenched in this sacred bath. And after some days when I'm here, I start itching for it again. You know, like, oh, I've been on my computer or whatever other things I had to do in town and I start itching, itching. I need to go back. I need to go get a holy bath. So, um, yeah. I think that's 
I think that's good. So, so perfect. I, yep. Yeah. Go oh, ahead. just the bottle. I'll just take this back to the village with me, the bottle from the falls and keep the good energy from the falls up in the village. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you, Heather. And I guess they couldn't get on because they were doing ceremony, but we've just connected Victoria Falls with Niagara what Falls energetically. Very much? Okay, got a mute. Okay, got it. Um, well, we're getting a little late, but so what? Maya, do you want to share something before I shift to Charles and Sue to close us out? Actually, um... I, I'll save my story of how I got deeply personally connected to water Oops. as a living intelligent being. I always loved water, but it wasn't until I was in my thirties uh, that I had a profound experience. But I just thought with a little shorter okay. time, since we are at our end, that I would like to read a piece that through my ongoing relationship with water one day when I was sitting with the water, I felt like it just downloaded me speaking from its viewpoint of how it feels about being in the world right now where we are right now uh, all of us trying to help awaken everyone to water as sacred source of everything of all life so I i'll just read that piece instead and in, uh, kind of um, yeah direct transmission from water let me just find it i pull it up here I am water. As water, I am a sovereign being and claim my right to move unrestricted, to flow at my own pace, surging, plunging, spiraling, meandering, resting in stillness, surrendering to the call of gravity, seeping deep into the caverns of Mother Earth free to find my way back to my other mother, the ocean, or to fly among the birds as a cloud, even to fly as a bird, as all living things are mostly made up of me. Free to retain my purity, to choose natural partners to bond with, to dance with, not to be forced to partner with harsh chemicals unnatural or toxic substances. I claim my right to retain my natural crystalline state so that I may receive and carry the beautiful harmonic vibrations of birdsong, the winds, the whales, the sounds of music and the earth's resonant heartbeat. I claim my rights to carry these vibrations without the constant interference of the pounding, grinding, roaring of machines that scramble my energy. Free to feed and nourish those who thirst for me, to transmit the vitality of life throughout their bodies. Free to offer them my sounds to calm them, reassure them, comfort them and help their emotions to release and flow. To offer my reflective mirror for inspiration, for seeing the truth and even seeing into the future. And in return, I yearn to be heard, listened to, respected as a conscious being, to have a two-way dialogue with other conscious beings to be treated as family, protected, respected, and supported to live my divine purpose on Mother Earth. I want humans to understand that they are all interconnected through me and that like me, they can retain their unique individuality, their diversity, while also awakening to the truth of their oneness their complete interdependence with every other living thing and with me as well as all of the other elements. I am water, a sovereign being, and my prayer is that all will recognize 
and live in their own sovereignty and harmonious, harmoniously woven into the sovereignty of the one web of life. Mm. Oh. <clears throat> wow. So we still, we have, Charles is going to do a closing prayer. Sue is going to do some closing words or songs. I don't know which one we do first. Let me see what comes to me in a minute. But first, I just want to thank Father Sky, Mother Earth, and all the beings for giving us this time. What an incredible time today. I had no idea what was going to come out of this. Uh, and I'm always comfortable with that because I don't have to know. Some of you have made major efforts to have the time to be here. Some like Heather, and she did this when we did our recording as well, end up traveling a long period of time to be here. So this work is, is amazing uh, and it's, it's working. It's great to see some of you I've known for years and others I haven't known quite as long and a few others who popped up and welcome. Glad to get to meet you. Meet you. Whoever was here today was meant to be here. There's no question about that. And so take that to heart. Share this around if it moves you as much as it did me. I got one other message from um, Pine Ridge that, and I put part of it up there, that they also felt, I think it was Heather said, she felt like she was traveling around with everybody. So did they. And he also said there were quite a few uh, wet eyes in their house. So our stories today and, our, and whatever we shared obviously is touching the heartstrings, which is exactly what we want. There is no time, there is no place. We can go and do whatever we want. That's the teaching of, of my Romani gypsy background. And I truly believe it and I've watched that play out over time. So thank you for everybody who was here. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for hearing each other. Um, thank you for all you do. There's, there's such incredible talent in this group. From Brianna, who started this out, who is also an amazing artist, to, um, you know, I could go on and on. Everyone here is playing multiple roles, shifting our hats as we go along. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we should probably, well, I guess I'll ask them. Sue, who's first, you or Charles? Charles, what do you think? I think the song first. And then finish with the prayer. It's kind of what I'm thinking. Too. I am good with whatever. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you both. Yeah. Um, this is uh, Water's Life. Daphne Sin, I believe her name was. Um, she was the. Daphne mother. Singing Tree. Singing Tree, okay. Yeah. I forgot to. <laughs> Thank you. Um, she was the medicine woman for. Um, at Standing Rock, and she uh, said she wrote the song while she was in her vehicle um, coming to Standing Rock. So it's just, and we, we sang it in her, her tent that she had uh, set up. And uh, so I'll just do, I'll just do one round of it since we are running, running late and um, pass it on to, uh, to Dove. I'll do another round. <laughs> do another round. That's what we're doing the best yeah we, we sure with our hearts and our 
prayers and our energy and our love for the earth and yep and our actions and our teachings yes and let's and let's thank and remember maybe as as chief talks let's thank all the young ones for what they're doing because they're doing a lot around the water you know i'm thinking of greta but there's a lot of gretas out there tons of them some we've seen here today so yeah thank you sue chief it's all yours well first off I would like to thank the life givers that are here today. I thank you for your your wisdom and your voice. And all the, the women around the world, I bow to you. I thank you, my life givers. Second of all, I give up this prayer. Get you money to hear me. I am weak. I send this weak voice to you. I want to thank the waters of the world, the waters on here on Turtle Island. I thank you for the life you have given to all the wingets, the four leggets, the two leggets, and those who live in you as the fishes. Grandfather, we thank you for all life and where it comes. We thank you for the life that you have gave us. We thank you for the waters that are inside us. And we thank you and we stand with the water. We stand with the earth mother and we stand with you. We thank you for the young warriors that are speaking out on this. We stand completely with them. Grandfather, we thank you and that we are grateful that this is what we have been given and that we will walk, we will march, we will talk, we will not stop And to all water is good for all and all things. Grandfather, we say, Chief, Chief Quitch. Oh, many things and people around the world. Grandfather, we are grateful to be able to do this and we'll do this until we are no more. Oh, Matakwa. Oh. Anybody that feels like it before we shut it off, open up your mic and just say, Water is life, where many would call me. Many would call me. No, water is life. It's life. Mm. Blessings from the waters. Many would call me. No. Water mm. is life. Thank you, water. Water is life. Water is life. And that is a wrap. We'll get it up as soon as we can. Blessings to all. Aho. Thanks for hosting. You bet. Thanks for being here. Thanks for opening it, George. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, so. Thank you, everyone. We're coming from so far or so many hours of different times of the day and night. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> That's the truth. Yes. And hanging in there. <laughs> Take care. I hope.